Surely you have followed the blockbuster movie called 300, released in 2006, directed by the renowned Zack Snyder. If you have seen this movie, you must have admired the majesty and indomitable spirit of 300 Spartans. They fought against Xerxes' massive army in the Battle of Thermopylae, one of the greatest battles in the history of the world. The movie represents the imbalance in numbers but the unyielding defense of every inch of homeland. What was the context of the battle and did the movie accurately depict all the details of the battle? This video will help answer all those questions. The Persian Empire, also known as the Kingdom of Persia, was a powerful empire in ancient history. Under the rule of Cyrus the Great, he expanded his power and conquered wealthy empires such as Babylon and Libya to unify the Persian Empire and become the largest empire in the world. All of this became a stepping stone for the Persian Empire to hatch its intention to conquer the Greek city-states to expand its territory to Europe. Under the reign of King Darius I, Persia officially attacked Greece after their ambassador was thrown into a well in Sparta. This is very similar to the scene in the movie where King Leonidas kicks the Persian ambassador into a well with the famous line, This is Sparta. Out of outrage for this provocative action, the Persian army began attacking Greece, aiming for Athens, camping at Marathon Bay, and losing the historic battle there. After the Persian army was forced to retreat to Asia, King Darius never gave up his intention to conquer Greece. However, before his wish could be fulfilled, the king of Persia passed away, passing on the throne to his son, Xerxes. The defeat in the Battle of Marathon was a slap in the face for the mighty empire. Therefore, Xerxes decided to carry out much larger invasions, implementing forced recruitment and gathering a massive army. The number of Xerxes's army has been a topic of debate among historians. But it is generally agreed that in the second invasion of Greece, Xerxes brought between 100,000 to 300,000 soldiers. That's a huge number, but it's nothing compared to the population of Persia. It should be noted that the population of Persia at that time accounted for 44% of the world's population. With over 50 million people, a long-term plan was prepared. Xerxes the Great and military experts decided to march to Europe, crossing Thrace and Macedonia. In the spring of 480 BC, Xerxes the Great, the Persian Emperor, captured northern Greece as a stepping stone to attack the south and approached Thermopylae. To prepare for the Persian invasion, 30 small Greek city-states, including Sparta and Athens, formed a military alliance. Sparta had the strongest military force and was appointed as the leader of the alliance. However, at the time when the Persian army was preparing to invade Greece, it coincided with Sparta's Carnea festival. According to the festival tradition, Spartans were not allowed to go to war, which had caused them to miss the historic Battle of Marathon ten years earlier. For the first time in Greek history, the city-states sat down together to form an alliance against Persia. The war council was attended by city-states such as Sparta, Thebes, and Thespiae. The Greek alliance against Persia recognized that this was an unequal battle. Their goal was to stop the Persian invasion, not to defeat an army of up to 300,000 soldiers. The plan to fight on the open ground was quickly abandoned because they would be crushed by the massive Persian army. Instead, they decided to fight at Thermopylae, a narrow and rocky pass that limited the Persian army's numerical advantage. This was also the time when the Olympic Games were taking place. According to Greek law, countries were not allowed to engage in warfare, and if there was a war, it had to be suspended. Therefore, the politicians of the country prevented King Leonidas from Sparta from bringing his army to block the enemy's advance. They wanted to wait until after the festival ended to start marching against the Persians. Believing that the situation was too urgent, King Leonidas decided to bring the best 300 warriors to defend the pass. The message from the Spartans was very clear. They wanted to encourage the southern army to fight and not to surrender to the enemy. In the movie, 300, Leonidas only used 300 soldiers to advance to Thermopylae and stop Xerxes' supposedly invincible army. However, this was a fictional detail in the film. In reality, the Spartan king received a lot of help from other cities, including around 3,800 soldiers from the Peloponnesus region, 700 soldiers from Thespiae, 1,000 soldiers from Phocis, and many other forms of assistance. At the time of arriving at Thermopylae, King Leonidas had about 7,000 soldiers. 
Of course, this number was still too small compared to the 10,000 troops known as the Immortals, the most elite and skilled force that Xerxes had brought to turn the Greek kingdom into a plain. Thermopylae was a perfect defensive location for the Greeks. It only had one weak point, which was a narrow mountain path that could allow the Persian army to circumvent an attack from behind. King Leonidas knew this critical weakness and arranged for 1,000 soldiers from Phocis to guard this point. Legend has it that before the Battle of Thermopylae, Xerxes sent an envoy to try to persuade Sparta to surrender. They promised everything, including the promise of sparing Spartan lives and allowing them to live in their homeland with the title of Friends of Persia. They would have all of this if they surrendered unconditionally. Of course, King Leonidas rejected the proposal from the Persian side. The Persian envoy threatened to destroy the Spartan army with arrows that will blot out the sun, indicating that they had a powerful archery unit that could rain down arrows on any enemy. Faced with this challenge, King Leonidas boldly declared that his army would fight in the dark. This scene also appeared in the movie, 300, with laughter shaking a land of Sparta when they resisted the enemy's arrow barrage. When the Persian envoy returned, Xerxes did not immediately attack. He waited for four days to demoralize the Spartan soldiers before advancing his army. However, King Leonidas' troops repelled each wave of attacks from the enemy. To continue waiting for reinforcements to fortify the defenses in Greece. As the bravest and most righteous warriors, the Spartans took advantage of the terrain at Thermopylae to form a phalanx formation. This formation was arranged in a rectangular shape, equipped with spears and shields arranged tightly in rows. The phalanx formation was therefore characteristic of a shield wall and a simultaneous thrust of spears towards the enemy. Making frontal attacks more difficult. Basically, it was very similar to the formation that appeared in the movie, 300. However, the real-life Spartans did not have a muscular and bare-chested physique like in the film. They relied heavily on their full body armor and protective parts for their feet and chest. This was essential for the Spartan army to protect each other's shields from each wave of attacks from the Persians. However, King Leonidas did not expect that there was a traitor within his army. He told the Persian army about the secret mountain path that circumvented the Spartan defense line. That was Ephialtes, who had been bribed by the Persians to betray his homeland. This opened the key for Xerxes' army to pass through Thermopylae with the resistance of the Spartans. When King Leonidas learned that his army was being trapped, he made a proposal that his troops could retreat to the rear. Many agreed with this proposal and fled, but about 2,000 soldiers agreed to stay and fight to the death, including 700 from Thespiae, 400 from Thebes, and 300 elite Spartan warriors. Remember that the soldiers other than the 300 royal guards of King Leonidas were not trained from childhood and did not have the ideal of sacrificing themselves for honor. Therefore, their decision to stay until the last moments to defend their homeland can sometimes be more praised than the 300 Spartan warriors. King Leonidas was wounded many times but still fought with his sword until his last breath. After King Leonidas fell, the Spartan warriors still bravely fought against the Persian army to protect the king's body. They pushed back the Persian army three times until the last person fell. The sacrifice of King Leonidas' army was not in vain as the other soldiers had enough time to retreat. They ran back to Athens to report and evacuate the people. In addition, the Greek army had time to regroup and strengthen their power to resist the invaders. Then, the Persians suffered a heavy defeat after the Battle of Salamis. The naval battle has gone down in human history, with about 300 Persian ships sunk, while the losses from the Greek army were only about 40 ships. The Battle of Salamis and the perseverance of the Spartans in the Battle of Thermopylae protected the young civilization of the West from the expansion of the Persian Empire. The courage and heroism of the Spartans have become an endless topic for filmmakers to explore from multiple perspectives. Today, there are still traces of the battle in the 5th century BC in the Thermopylae area. The narrow path between two mountains has now been expanded, but you can still imagine it through the historical relics in this area. The Greeks erected a statue of King Leonidas and a memorial to the fallen warriors in the Battle of Thermopylae. The bravery and righteousness of King Leonidas' army make us question whether history would be rewritten if he had not been betrayed. Would the Persian Empire have sent so many soldiers to crush this area and invade the territory of Greece? 
you can leave your opinion in the comments section. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel to follow the next videos. Thank you very much, goodbye, and see you again.